a few thoughts on open education, privacy, and trust. So I think learning requires a certain vulnerability. We have to recognize that we don't know things. We have to be open to not knowing things. We have to listen and experiment and sometimes stumble and fail. We have to be open to learning. But that vulnerability can play out in lots of different ways, depending on the setting for our learning, for example, and on the role we get to play in deciding what that learning looks like, the way we're treated as learners. And whether we like it or not, we are vulnerable when we are enrolled in these formal education institutions, for example. That vulnerability is different for, for a five-year-old than it is for a 15-year-old than a 50-year-old, for example, returning to college. In some ways, school is designed to do something to you. It tells you what you need to know. It tells you how you should behave in doing so, right? So we are vulnerable, not just intellectually, not just emotionally, and not just in ways that might open us up to new ideas, which is a good thing generally, right? But in ways that might make open us up to less pleasant experiences as well. Do you trust school? Do you trust your instructors, your peers, and do you have a choice? How we answer those questions will vary greatly based on a number of factors. So we have trust, vulnerability, choice, control, power. These are all interconnected when it comes to learning. And they're all interconnected around issues of privacy as well. And I think what's key to remember is that privacy isn't really the opposite of publicness, right? To have privacy isn't the same as to be safe, and it isn't the same as to be hidden. By extension, I think we should be clear that privacy is not the opposite of openness. We have to recognize that Privacy isn't this universal thing that society has always respected or that all members of society have benefited from equally, something that is now under attack from new technologies. I think context always matters. And again, power matters. But we do have to recognize how much new technologies are really reshaping these issues. They reshape our educational practices they reshape the context in which learning happens, and they, I think they're reshaping power in ways that are both really obvious and ways that are quite subtle. You know, how much privacy do you have to hand over in school? And how much have you had to do so historically, right? It's one thing for a teacher to recognize that you're still struggling with your eight times table, for example. But it's another thing entirely for a piece of software that the school mandates you use to track massive amounts of, massive quantities of other data about your progress. Not just how well you score on the various math exercises or on math quizzes, but on all the mouse clicks, right? All the videos that you watch all the times you rewound a video or fast forwarded, when your eyes wandered, right? When you clicked elsewhere. All this data and metadata represents an unprecedented opportunity to learn more about how students learn, or at least that's what we're told. But what does this data collection and data mining mean in terms of power and privacy, trust and vulnerability? What does it mean in terms of how students are already surveilled and shaped by school, right? Do students know that this data is being collected on them? What sorts of trust relationship is expected between a student, a school, or perhaps even an informal learning environment, I should add, and, and technology when it comes to all this learning data, when it comes to learning opportunities and experiences, but really when it comes down to our content, our data, and our sort of private personal learning selves. My report card, even when I was learning the math facts, you know, 35 years ago, might have said, oh, she's getting better at her eight times table, but she sure talks a lot in art class. Or it said, you know, she can do all the math times table in some arbitrary amount of time that we've decided you need to know your math tax, math facts, so good for her, bravo, but she tends to push to the front of the line in the library. You know, so in some extent, we should recognize that students have always been watched and they've always been observed. 
as they've learned. They've been punished for certain sorts of behaviors and rewarded for other behaviors. But now we have to not just think about what that's always looked like in terms of students' autonomy and their agency, right? Are they objects of school? Are they someone who things are done to? Or are they the subjects in control of their learning? But now we have to think about how technology is reshaping this. We have to recognize too, I think, that the surveillance that schools have done, often we're told in our best interest, has never been applied equally. Some bodies, marked bodies if you will, have always been seen as more undisciplined and they've always been watched more closely. You know, will technology change this? Will technology put even more scrutiny onto students? On to which students? And which students are in the position to sort of resist that scrutiny, to avoid that scrutiny? Which students will be granted privacy? Which students will have to demand more of it? Which students will have to skirt the margins in order to sort of get that back for themselves? And these are questions of power, right? They are not simply questions of school policy or the school use of technology or learners' use of technology. I think ideally, in some ways, open education cracks open some of that control and power because at its best, it recognizes that the learner should be the driver, the driver of learning, not the instructor and not simply the institution. But I think we have to do more to make sure that open education, you know, when it's paired with these various internet technologies, isn't reinscribing new forms of control and power, right? And I don't just mean control and power of education institutions, but I also mean sort of surveillance and control by the technology sector. It's a different sort of shaping of our behavior. It's a different sort of shaping of what we're supposed to do, what the sort of self that we're supposed to perform and the self that we're supposed to become as learners, right? And I think we should ask, just as we thought about sort of do learners trust school, we need to consider do learners trust technology? Why or why not? You know, has that trust been earned or has that trust been granted, right? What sort of privacy um, should learners demand? What sort of privacy do they need to perhaps surrender? You know, how do we reconcile that need for a certain amount of vulnerability in order to learn with the vulnerability of having so much more of ourselves our data, our profiles, really sort of our life bits, right? We have that exposed now as we turn to technology to do that very learning. What do we have to do differently in order to build trust? What do we have to do differently in order to reconcile vulnerability, privacy, and trust? while we learn with technology.